what's up divas and what's up divos it's your girl april and it is of course wednesday so it is time for real talk so yes you guys i'm fanning myself off because i am so damn hot right now and of course i have central air but the hair central air conditioning but wearing a wig is and moving around throughout the house can really like give you like a heat stroke and if you see on the back of my bed right here in the post, I do keep one of those clip-on fans. So there's one like on each side because I do like the central air and I do have a ceiling fan too. But because my bedroom ceilings are super high, they're like higher than the rest of the rooms in the house. I don't really get, my room doesn't really get as cold as everybody else's. So, you know, and I think I'm going through the, the changes. I don't know, but I get really hot, like super quick. Maybe if I lose some weight, that would be like another plus too. But anyway, so of course I'm back over here in front of my window because it is like the best natural lighting ever. Like seriously guys, I really don't have to do too much to the video when I sit in front of my window. So that is the reason why I'm back here. Um, the hair that I'm actually rocking is a wig that I created and dyed with box hair dye. And this is inspired by the Janet Jackson JJ um, from her 2015 BET Award appearance, which I loved her hair. So it inspired me. I was actually making a wig when I was watching it, though I don't watch those type of shows. But the hair is from Glam Angels Hair and it is the Brazilian Loose Curl. And I love it. Like it is so long and so soft and pretty like so pretty so i do have a video on how i created that if you're interested and i'll post that for you guys below so yeah if you're interested in this makeup look just let me know and i could do a video on that it will be right here in the natural lighting so other than that let's get on with this real talk but before we do if you need a video about yourself so if you're interested in a real talk video featuring your story you can always email me at muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com please make sure to put in the subject line real talk and if you want to change the name of your character or your person in the actual email then go ahead and do so because that just alleviates me having to do so and think of names and even though there's like a million names out there in the world i don't really get too many ideas i'm always picking like the same damn thing so yeah go figure so let's get on with this real talk So I hope I'm not coming across as too shiny on camera um, because it's a really dreary day. Thank goodness. I love it when it's dreary and there's no sun because it's raining and I love it because it's like very rare out here in Arizona. So I love it when it's dreary and gloomy. It's That makes me happy. But yeah, so I'm sitting in front of the window. Of course, it's not that much of a brightness, but I do have my ring light on. So let's get on with these real talks. I'm going to try to do three. Okay. Hi, April. Okay, um, she spelled my name with a Y, A-P-R-Y-L, which is different, but okay. Hi, April. How are you? I'm a longtime follower of your YouTube channel. I just love your personality and how helpful and honest you are with your viewers. I recently began bleaching my skin again. I'm naturally an NC42-43 in MAC Cosmetics, and I'm trying to get to an NC35. I've been using products with 2 and 3% hydrocon... How do you say that? Hydroconin. It's so time consuming and takes months to really lighten up. Plus all the sunscreen. I'm draining my money like this. But I really want to do but but what I really want to know is do you think doing this is self hate? I love being African American, but honestly I'd rather be mixed with Asian or something. I try to convince myself I'm doing this for my career. I'm 28 and dream of becoming a pop slash R&B singer. But deep down, I want to be a to be whiter, like what's popular now. I've become so colorblind. I'm ashamed, April. I told my mom I only like light-skinned guys and would never even talk to a dark-skinned guy because I refuse to have dark-skinned babies. Reading this, I really do sound full of self-hate, but I'm convinced it's okay. Please help your sister to love herself inside and out and not be assess obsessed with color. Love you and thank you so much. Love colorblind. So basically, colorblind is a color NC42 slash 43 in MAC Cosmetics. And she's trying to get to a NC35. Um, 
So let me see what color that is basically. Cause she's an NC42 MAC foundation. Let's see. I really want to see what she's talking about. Okay, so she's really not that dark. I don't know because they just show in different images or whatever. So she's like brown skin. Okay, so she's like brown skin. So she's trying to get to my complexion. First of all, and you're thinking it's for your career, you don't want to date the lights. You only date light skin guys. You don't date dark skin guys because you don't want to have no dark skin babies. And you're feeling like it's self hate. If you're feeling like it's self hate, colorblind, then obviously it is. All of this skin bleaching bullshit, people with brown skin, now they light skin, they my complexion. Like, really, who does that? Like, be happy with what you have and what God gave you. I wouldn't care if I was brown skin or dark skin. If that's how I was born, then that's how I was born. You know, here's the thing. Some people realize that they feel like, okay, being a lighter complexion may help you in the world. It really doesn't, okay? That's so stereotypical. And a lot of people feel that way. Yeah, you do get treated differently, unfortunately, and that's sad to say that dark skin skin versus lighter color skin tones do get treated differently um when i used to go out um shopping with my ex-husband because he's dark skin you know they would never ask me can we help you with something they would always speak to him and ask him is there something you need help with is there something you need help with and he'd always say to me you see you light-skinned people y'all don't Y'all don't get harassed like that. Or you, you know, my nationality is, okay, I'm mixed. And if those of you guys who wanted to know, I am mixed. I am black and Italian. Um, but I call myself an African-American. I'm not trying to bleach myself. I'm not trying to get myself any darker. I actually love myself the way I am. So it's sad when I see people out there or these celebrities bleaching their skin because they feel like it's better for the social, their social life, their social media life, entertainment. So they're bleaching themselves and they're going from dark skin to light skin. Like, where do people do that at? There's so many things out there now that people just want to gravitate to. It's so, all these different cosmetic surgeries. It's all these different lightning creams. Like, be happy. Like, you got these girls who are getting these big bubble asses. And I'll be the first to tell you that some men do not think that is attractive at all. When you're, okay, if you want to get one or two booty shots because you ain't got no ass, then go ahead. But then when you get into the extreme and you're looking like Jessica Dime Piece from Love & Hip Hop then you looking abnormal. You look, or, or K. Michelle, you looking totally abnormal. Nobody has a big ass like that in this little tiny waist. Or we got those with the waist trainers who want this little tiny hourglass shape and this big bottom derriere. So everybody looks into this appearance thing and they just really, really take it. They just really get into it and then they start hating on themselves. Like, I will tell you the first, I will be the first to honestly say, sometimes I feel like that too. Like, I have those waist trainers and I wanted one of those skinny ass waist too, you know. But as time went on, April cannot sit there and fucking have a contraption on all day that is constricting me of freaking breathing. Like, you know, I gave up on it. If I lose some weight, I'm happy with that. But I'm really not trying to die losing weight. Also, like with the skin bleaching. Who wants to be... I just... When you when you think about people bleaching their cells and bleaching their skin, you look back at your old pictures and you're like, damn, I wish I would have never did this to myself. Oh, I wish I would have never got cosmetic surgery. Oh, I wish I never would have bleached my skin because I missed the old me. When you finally snap back into reality and you realize that, you know... It's too late because you've already gotten yourself 10 shades lighter or your nose is already fucking crooked and fixed how many times and you've gotten facelifts upon facelifts and lip injections and big ass boobs and big ass titties. Like I do want some fake titties. I ain't even going to front only because I want them to sit up. I don't need them any bigger. Trust and believe. I don't need them any bigger. But I would like for them to sit up. Gravity has gotten a toll on me. And so for the meantime, I'm wearing like some really good push-up bras. But I would like to have um, perkier breasts. No bigger titties. Just perkier titties. But far as self-hate... You're already saying you're trying to get to this shade and it's time consuming and you're wasting money. Why won't you just be happy with yourself? If you're doing this for your career, then they're going to take you for who you are, which is your talent. 
There are a lot of fucking people out there that are light-skinned and can't fucking sing worth a damn and got a hit record. And I, for the life of me, try to figure it out. Like, what the hell? Like, Tamar Braxton, I think she's not too talented, okay? She's very over-cosmetically surgerized. And I don't even know if that's the word, but it is for today. But, you know, she is light. She is done up. And she's just kind of a little bit too into herself. But she's so, she's just so overdone. She's so overdone. And her talent is like this. And I say this really, really um, with a lot of meaning behind it. Because being light doesn't mean that you're going to get the job done always. You know, it's nothing wrong with being your complexion. Now, as far as you dating light-skinned guys only, okay, that's your preference. And your preference is only because you don't want dark-skinned babies. My preference is I don't date light-skinned guys. I never have. I mean, I have when I was in high school, but I don't find them attractive at all. And a lot of people are like, well, you're light-skinned. Just because I'm light-skinned doesn't mean that I got to like a light-skinned dude. My preference is dark skin all the way. And it's not because I want some kids with color. It's just that's because what I find sexy. The darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. I like dark chocolate, okay? I love dark chocolate all the way. But that doesn't mean that I want to wake up tomorrow and be dark skin because I love dark skin man. I just love the way they look. That I find it very appealing, okay? Very, very attractive. But, you know, there are those who just only like light skin guys and they find them attractive. I don't really know what they see too much in them, but, you know what I'm saying? That's their preference. But waking up and deciding that you want to be from brown skin to my complexion is really not a cool preference. Why would you want to wake up? It's self-hate. You're not happy with, with yourself. And if you have to do all of this for a career, then maybe you need to just relook a whole lot of shit. Sit down, look in the mirror, and relook your life and where you're going to be. You want to be a pop singer. Not everybody makes it in the pop singer world or the music entertainment business. And they don't choose you on your fucking color. We look take, for example, Michael Jackson. He started off brown skin. And he was a big hit. He was always a hit as his true complexion. And he went from brown skin to damn near see-through. Okay? He got so pale. You take him. They didn't say, well, you're not light enough, so we can't take you. There are a lot of people that have loads of talent that went into the talent world and Mary J. Blige, she is not light-skinned. She is brown-skinned, though she's looking a little bit lighter to me. But that's neither here nor there. But you have a lot of people that are darker-skinned that have a whole lot of talent that could sing their asses off and don't need to be judged by the com color complexion of their skin. So colorblind, you are so colorblind right about now. Stop hating on yourself. Your parents, what do your parents think about this? Like... Girlfriend, wake up. You're 28 years old. Get a real job. Stop worrying about becoming a singer. Do that. I mean, try to achieve your dreams. I'm all for everybody trying to achieve their dreams. However, a dream does not mean to mark yourself up and change your entire self. You're going to be this on the outside, but what you're going to be on the inside. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be light-skinned on the outside, and then on the inside, you're still dark-skinned. Okay? You don't want to have no dark-skinned babies. Well, sweetheart, let me tell you something. You can get a light-skinned guy, but let's let's be realistic. Your pigment is still brown skin, dark skin. So your babies are still going to come out with some color, some darker color. So don't think because you bleached your skin that you think that your babies are going to come out light skin. That's just really fucking ridiculous, okay? And just because you date a light-skinned guy doesn't mean that your kids are going to come out light skin. My kids' fathers are dark skin or brown skin, okay? And all of my kids are darker than me. And I'm light-skinned. Alright? So don't think for once that your kids are going to come out light because you got yourself a light-skinned man. Think about it. Think about a whole lot of shit bleaching your skin. You don't know what that can do to your skin in the long run. You're going to get old and wrinkled up and look like a tangerine because you keep putting all of this shit on your skin. Just like those people that go tanning. Now, I'll be the first to say, admit, I used to go tanning. And I like to tan because in the wintertime, a bitch get real pale, okay? So, I do like to keep some type of color on my legs. Right now, they are very golden from the sun out here but i do like to tan but i'm not i'm not overdoing it i'm not sitting in no tanning salon for like every day looking like an orange i'm not doing that you got those white people out there that just ain't happy being pale and they just want to be brown some of them looks darker than me they be like darker than me i'd be like god damn okay can a sister get some recognition around here shit 
colorblind, stay your true self, okay? You're taken for talent. If you ain't got no singing talent, then your career ain't really going to blossom. Just because you light-skinned don't mean you're going to get ahead and be the prettiest girl. There are plenty of beautiful-ass brown-skinned and dark-skinned women. So don't think that because you're light-skinned that there is just beauty. You're just beautiful. Because there are some ugly-ass fucking light-skinned women, too. Trust and believe. So, yes, let Colorblind know what you think about skin bleaching. Is she self-hating on herself? I just think she don't like herself at all. Like, for real. I've never, the only thing I've tried to fade away was my freckles as a kid, as a teenager, because I always would get teased on them. So that was the reason behind the after, that was the reason behind me doing that is because I was always getting teased and I hated my freckles. So I started using like this Ambi cream and it was fade, it said it fades your freckles away. They never went nowhere. And you know what? I've grown to love myself and I've grown to love my freckles. Even though you guys probably can't see it on camera because of my makeup and with the light. But yeah, I've got a whole face full of freckles. And when you see me in person with makeup on and all, you see them. They're right there. So I'm never trying to cover them up because it is who I am. And I love who I am. Bottom line. All right. So the next one. Okay. Hi, April. I watch your videos all the time. I love your advice. I love how real you are. And I love how you keep me rolling. I need a good laugh right about now. So long story short, I took my kids to see their deadbeat ass father earlier today since he has not made any effort to come and see them. And mind you, my daughter got scabies from preschool and wanted him to know what's going on. And we've had more problems. But yeah, anyways, I get, I get there to his mama's house and I walk up the stairs to the porch. And sure enough, there he is worth, there he is with some druggy. Oh. Okay, so she, I walk up, to, up the stairs to the porch. And sure enough, there he is with some druggy looking whore. And he looks so bad like he's straight up crackhead status now. Just bad. Anyways, he and I walk to the car so I can show him our daughter has these damn rashes. Oh, okay. So we walk to the car and I wanted to show him our daughter has these damn rashes. And he proceeds to tell, me, tell my, my daughter, what does your sister have? And my son tells him she has scabies from school. And, the, and his lame ass starts laughing and says you should just say rash and then tells me I should leave my kids with him and I should leave I was like first of all why don't you tell that chick on the porch she needs to leave first then we can talk and he is so sorry he said no I'm not it's your way it's oh okay so let me email the words okay so he's and he is so sorry. He says, no, I'm not. It's not your way. And I told him, this ain't even your house. It's your mama house. I ended up telling him off and I left. So I won't be taking my kids nowhere near him. I honestly still have love for him. And what killed me that he basically chose drugs and that the druggie over me and the kids. I know it's the drugs talking, but it still hurts. I guess I just want to feel hurt. I just want him to feel hurt or guilt or sorry or something. But it's like, I don't know how I wish... I wish he could go to jail or something happens. That will, which will make him open his eyes and had a good, and realize he had a good family thing. But I don't know. I feel like he should pay for hurting me and my kids. How can I get this motherfucker back? I was thinking of getting him jumped, but I still think that's not enough. I want to get him where it hurts because he deserves that. April, I usually don't wish bad on anybody. Not even my worst enemy. But when it comes to him, there's such pain and hurt that he has caused me. I just want him to feel the same way that I do. I want him to regret dissing me and my kids for some no good druggy bitch. Um, we're gonna call her Allison because I don't. She didn't say it, she changed her name. So basically, Allison has some kids. Her daughter has scabies from preschool. She went to see her boyfriend or her ex boyfriend rather, which is her kids' fathers. And when she pulled up, he was on his mother's porch with some crackhead looking whore. He's also been using drugs, and she's and he's chosen the drugs and the drug whore over her and her kids. So Allison is like, she feels hurt. She still feels love for him. But now she's feeling so much hurt that she wants to get him beat down. She wants him to feel the pain that she feels. And she never wishes any kind of harmful activities on any of her worst enemies. But for him, she really wants him to feel what she feels, which is pain. What should she do? 
First of all, Allison, what you should not do is get his ass jumped. That is not going to make the situation any better. People run their mouth. People talk. People kill people. People murder people. And it's going to all come back to you. If something happens to this guy, your kid's father, that really, really is drastic, whether he ends up in a coma, in a hospital, beat down really bad, or dead, the people that have done this to him, it's all going to fall back on you. People think that when you do a crime, oh, we're going to stick together, we're not going to say anything, that it's nothing's going to be said and your ass is not going to get caught. What? You're going to get caught in the long run. I watch Investigation Discovery Channel all day, every day. That is my show. And regardless of if you do the crime with your best friend and y'all been friends like this since grade school, since kindergarten, since coming out of the womb, you thinking that the secret is safe with them when the secret is not fucking safe with them. Sometimes it's always best to do a crime by yourself. And I'm not giving you any kind of advice of doing crimes, but first of all, here's the thing. He's a drug addict. He cannot help what he does. He's a drug addict. He doesn't care about anybody. He doesn't even care about himself. And, in, and deep down, he does love his kids, but the drug is taking over him, okay? He's got his drug addict girlfriend. He's living in his mama's house. He's laughing. He doesn't really care about what's going on in the world. And for you to get him jumped and for you to even think like that is a really mean and selfish type of act. Either way, Allison, he's going to reap what he sows. Whether he continues to be a crackhead and not take care of his kids or if he gets himself clean, he's going to see in the later run, damn, I should have did this, I should have did this, and look how long it took me to get clean, and I wasted all this time. You don't have to get him beat down. You don't have to. That's not going to teach him a lesson. What's going to happen is he's going to get his ass kicked, and then he's going to go and smoke crack or whatever he's smoking and get high just to relieve the pain of just getting fucked up. So I would never wish, wish anything on my worst enemy. As much as I dislike my ex-husband, I would never wish for him to get beat up. I would never wish for him to be dead or anything like that. You know, there's just a fine line between love and hate. And really, it's really ungodly to wish harm onto anybody, okay? For those of you who feel like, oh, wishing harm on people is okay, it's really not. If you have to take a reality check with yourself, what's wrong with you if you're wishing bad on somebody? You're wishing evil to come upon them. Would you like for somebody to wish that on your own family, your kids, or how you feel? Like, Allison on some real shit. I love each and every one of you guys, but right now that was so... I'm going to be honest and tell you, that was dead ass wrong. Like, why would you even ask me? Like, I'm not all for fucking people up, okay? Like, let's see. If you harm me and you put your hands on me, I'm going to try my best to fuck your ass up. If I can't, I'm not going to retaliate by getting somebody to jump you. That just doesn't make any sense because it's going to come back to me. And then I'm either going to get arrested and I really don't think that I'm going to make it in jail because they don't allow you to wear wigs. And if I can't wear my wig, I'm not at my 100% best, okay? So I'm not really good in jail and I don't want to be nobody's bitch, okay? Because, yeah, I don't want my face cut up. I'm not trying to be nobody's bitch, so... I'm not trying to get anybody fucked up and jumped over no bullshit. He's a crackhead. She's a crack whore. That's what they do. Crackheads don't give a fuck about your kids or you or themselves. They don't give a shit about anything but getting high. Getting high all day, every day. That is their agenda. That is on the agenda. That is their motive. That is what they do and that is what they do all day, every day. Is try to figure out how to keep getting high. Okay? bottom line so for you to wish harm on him and for you to get him fucked up is not going to make him like sober up and realize damn it's not going to make him open his eyes and realize i had a good thing and i should have stayed with it he's not going to realize that until he's ready said and done and when he ever decides to get clean he may not even realize that then okay he may come apologize to you but until then allison you need to just leave it alone okay let himself get himself together However long that's going to take. But don't wish harm on him. You got to realize that's still your kid's father. Regardless of how you feel toward him. Either you love him or you don't. You say you love him and you still have strong feelings for him. But now you're ready to get his ass fucked up. Like, damn. Whew. I would hate to be your worst enemy. So leave him alone. Let him figure out what the hell he needs to do with himself. Maybe his mother will get him into a drug rehab. Maybe he'll put him on his own self into a drug rehab. But you forcing him, you forcing the kids on him, you forcing him onto the kids is not going to make him realize that, you know what, I need to get my shit together. You can talk to someone until you're blue in the face and until they're blue in the face of um, basically what they need to do. An alcoholic, 
You can tell them all day, every day, stop drinking. I've done that. Been there and done that with my ex-husband. Okay? And it really didn't do no good. Okay? So, not saying I know crackheads. Because I do know crackheads, too. I have some crackhead friends. They're not friends, but, you know, they were in New York. They were my friends. It was another lifetime. But, um... You know, and I do know some crackheads just from living in the neighborhood. They're not bad people because they smoke crack, but they just need, they're people that need to get their shelf, self together, their shit together. But, you know, you can tell him all day, every day, till you're blue in the face, till he's blue in the face. You need to get your shit together. You need to get your shit together. You can put him in rehab. They're not going to get themselves together until they're ready to get themselves together. So, getting him into a physical altercation is not going to make him wake up and say, I not need to smoke crack today, or I not need to sniff coke today. I need to go into rehab and get myself together, because I just got my ass whooped. Please, girl, they're drug addicts. They used to get fucked up. What you gonna do ain't gonna do no difference and make no shit, no better, no how, no way. So, don't even think about it. Get your shit together, Allison, and stop wishing harm on people. That's just not righteous at all. And I'm not I'm not going to say I'm holier than thou, but I don't wish harm on people, and I really don't wish on fucking people up. That's just, that's just my motto. I don't. So let Allison think what you think about her druggy ex-baby father, ex-boyfriend, which is slash baby father. What would you do in that case scenario if he had a new girlfriend, which was a crack whore, and he was on drugs, and y'all had kids together? Would you get him fucked up? Like, really? Like, excuse my French. Who does that in the real world? Okay, so a last real talk for the day. Hi, Miss April. I apologize in advance if this comes across as me trying to rush ahead of others who need advice. I know you don't like being rushed, and that is not my intention. However, I am in a quite pickle. I am pregnant, and I am trying my hardest to relocate before the baby is born. The father is barely involved already, and I need to find employment, housing in another state. I am also so I am so inspired by how you made the move from New York to Arizona, and I would like to be able to do something similar. Is there any advice, advice or tips you could give me? I would be forever grateful. This doesn't need to be a real talk. It can just be between us. Thank you, and we're going to call her Annie. So, Annie, now, so you're pregnant and you want to relocate, and the baby father is not even involved, which is so, it's just pathetic. When a woman is pregnant, that is their, their, it should be their best time of their life because you have a little human being growing inside of you. Like, who can do that except for women? You know, and it's just life and it's so, like, amazing. Like, because you've got this little thing that's like a grain of salt and then it just develops over time and you get huge. And I just think that pregnant women are, like, the most beautiful women there are there is like seriously and I every time I see a pregnant woman I just find her to be so beautiful because I'm not gay or anything but um I just find it beautiful because they have this little life inside of them and you're giving your own life whether you know it or not you're giving your own life your nutrients your your blood your oxygen you're doing all of this for this little baby and you're protecting it inside of your wound and it's just like it's just like a beautiful thing that's not why I have five kids though but I just think like it's a beautiful thing and when you get someone pregnant I really feel like you should share that experience with them and be there like who the fuck just walks out of their, their unborn's life and doesn't even care and has no concern for the person? Like, don't you wonder if they're okay or, like, do they need anything or their feet swollen? Would you like me to go to the doctors with you? It's like, wow, so pathetic. And then when the baby's here, you don't do anything still? It's like, damn, you're even more pathetic than I thought you were. But anyway, so anyway, um, yeah, I just realized I have hair that needs to be rinsed out okay yeah like for an hour ago um but anyway so i just feel like relocating is not that easy as it seems um, had to check on the hair real quick so like relocating is not as easy as it if it appears to be like so when i relocated i like saved up i used my entire income tax refund to um you know move um to pay the movers you know i think like it was meant for me though to move because 
I had movers, and you know, I wasn't trying to leave my shit behind. I had movers, and like, I got like a lot of different like price quotes for moving from New York to Arizona, and they were running like eight and ten thousand dollars, like in that type of range. So, I got like a lot of different price quotes, and that was kind of like scaring me off. Like, damn, I didn't even have no money to go there. They gonna move my shit, and I'm gonna be all the way over here still. So it just so happened that I call American. Um, I forget the name of the moving company, but I have the papers downstairs, so I'll I'll make sure to put that in the video. But it just so happened that the day that I called there, the young lady was like, "Well, we have a freight going to Arizona, but we don't have enough um, things to put on the truck." So basically, the company that I use, they don't just take your stuff and just start going off with it. What they do is they came, they came and got my stuff and they stored it in like their warehouse for like three weeks, like a month in their New York City warehouse. They come and they get it. And then they load this humongous big ass truck. They load this humongous big truck with all different companies or stores. So like they're not just going to take my stuff to Arizona. They're going to have each part of the truck is sectioned off. So when they get enough freight, and you don't have to wait for too long. It'll be like a month to wait for your stuff. Um, so when you get, um, or two weeks, it all depends. But when you get enough freight, they, they what they do is they like to take it all at one trip and go to where they need to go to. So I was, like, um, my stuff was in the truck divided off. You know, they section your stuff off. And then another company stuff will be in there and so forth. And they deliver the stuff as they're driving throughout the West Coast. So I just so happened that she gave me a price quote for a thousand and 1974, like $1,974 for this price quote for my stuff. And I was like, wow, like depending on how much it weighed, like, okay, I could wait two or three weeks for my stuff to get delivered. That's nothing because some things I was going to buy new anyway. So anyway, I got lucky with that, and my total delivery for everything was like $3,000 um, that I had to pay. And I paid them on the spot, and my stuff came like 16 days after I came to Arizona. But, you know, before I moved here, I did um, fly out to Arizona, and um, I looked for the house that I wanted to move into, and... Um, it wasn't like a really great first trip because I really couldn't find anything. Um, people weren't answering their phones, so I actually did it at home over the internet. I found a realtor, um, and there's loads of realtor companies out here, property management companies rather, and she basically helped me find a home that I moved into. She put me in this like really beautiful subdivision, um, Garden Lakes, and it's such a really beautiful gated community. And being that I was not going to fly back out there because it wasn't cheap, she gave me a virtual tour of everything. So that made it a lot easier and I wish I would have kind of done that before. She let me know what was in the area. So when you're moving out of state, you're relocating, you want to kind of like see what's in the area, what's around you, what stores are surrounding you. You can always do that on Google Map. You can always find that out with the surrounding stores or in your area, which is really helpful because you don't want to move somewhere where there's nobody or you don't have transportation and there's not a lot of things around and you have to walk to it you don't want to move somewhere like that but um so that was the one thing she she helped me find the house we went back and forth um gave me virtual tours let me know what was in the area what schools was in the area and just so happened that in the subdivision where i live at it's huge um so there is an elementary school and across the street the high school so my kids don't really have to go nowhere we stay right in garden lakes and this is what it is but um i just had it in my mindset that i wanted to move because i was already going through a lot and i didn't want to be in schenectady new york anymore it was like a little town you know i'm originally from new york city and i was born and raised in new york city and i moved upstate once i got older and it was like a town of nothing but drug addicts and just no opportunity so i wanted to bring my kids out of that environment and bring them somewhere else so once um me and my husband started going through like a whole lot of problems and issues he started drinking again taking things from me um i just got really tired of it and finally to the point where we kind of got we didn't kind of we did get into like a physical battle with one another and he ended up going to jail um because he was on federal um, probation and he was drunk and 
So the cops were called. So anyway, um, at that moment in time, you know, I just had got it in my mind state that I don't even want to be around anybody in Schenectady because it's not really any good vibes. There is no job opportunities out here for me. The houses out here suck. The, the living out here sucks. It's depressing. It's always dreary and dark. And I just don't want to be here anymore. So I'm just ready to leave. And though it was a new venture for me in life, you really can't knock something until you try it. So you really can't say, well, I don't like Cali and you've never been to Cali. Or I don't like Alaska and you've never been to Alaska. You have to give it a try. And so that's what I did. I gave it a try. And when I first moved here, I will tell you that I moved in the summertime in July of 2013. And it was freaking hot as hell. And I was miserable because it was so hot and I didn't realize it got that hot. And, you know, the cult, it was a culture shock to me, too. Um, so a lot of days I would go outside with an attitude because it was, first of all, the fucking heat and the culture shock. And now it's like it's worn on me and I'm used to it. It's like there are black people out here. Um, there are more Hispanics than blacks, but I really, really love it here because it's just beautiful. And everybody is so nice and the weather is beautiful and the scenery is really beautiful. So basically what I did... Um, and is I saved, I took my whole entire income tax money and I put it in my savings account and had them freeze my account. So the only thing that I could do was put money into my savings account. I could never take it out unless I went to the bank and signed some papers. And I was determined not to take any money out. So whatever money I got, whether it be from my job, because I did work from home still um, for Walgreens and Amazon, whether it be from that or videos or selling wigs or income tax all of my money I would take it and put it right into my savings account and where it would be frozen so I would survive for like two weeks off of like 20 bucks but that's how I would live you know I had everything I needed and I was just determined so to get out here was like a long drive you know it took me four days I stayed in Pennsylvania for a week because I wanted to hang out with my dad and my brother so we, we chilled and my stepmom we chilled and then we just drove here and I was able to I was happy and I was I was happy and free because I was able to leave on a good note meaning I was able to go and drive out here you know in my truck with my kids and my dog and be able to take them on like a road trip across the country um, it was either me um, shipping my truck, which would cost me $2,000 and then paying for plane tickets, or paying $1,800 in hotel fees and gas. So, you know, four days. Each night we stayed in, like, the Hilton or the Hampton Inn, and we ate, and we had, like, a great road trip. I'm not going to say I would do it again um, in a truck. It was a ta my Tahoe that I have um, because I was the only driver, so I don't think I will ever do that again. If I ever want to do cross-country I will definitely, definitely, definitely get an RV. I'm not about to sit in a Tahoe all day, and neither are my kids. Um, but it was a great experience because at first it kind of scared me, like, I can't do this. I got to drive for three, four days. I can't do this. That was kind of like what was deterring, um, deter just like basically scaring me away from deteriorating me from moving here. It was the long drive. But once I got here, it was, like, amazing. So my tips for you would be to look online. You're pregnant, you don't, you need a job, look for online work, like go to Arise, A-R-I-S-E dot com. That's where they have the online work, that's where I worked from. They have different companies like Sprint, AT&T, Verizon, Amazon, um, Sears, you can, you know, you got to take a course, of course, um, just a course just to be certified which takes like a couple of weeks and then you go to a class whatever job you choose you go to a class for like a month which is they're teaching you how to operate everything and do everything from home but it's it's a good decent job um, I'm not saying you're gonna get rich off of it but it's a good decent job um, and um, look look on look for places like I looked on Craigslist for places, um, you look on Craigslist, apartment.com, you know, if you have any type of help, like financial aid or like section aid or like social services, if you get that, ask them how can you relocate. There's like so many different ways to do it, but basically the most important thing that you need to do is save your money. If you don't have the money to move, then trust and believe it's not an easy task. Moving is not cheap especially all the way across the country. It is really not cheap. So I would advise you to make sure that you're mentally and stable, uh, mentally ready and for this journey. If you're running away because your baby father is not doing anything for you or the unborn, then girlfriend, please, why run to the next state? Just not be bothered with him. 
you know, you need to take him like a grain of salt. Sometimes you gotta take a person like a grain of salt. It is what it is. And not let them, like, run your life. Not let them run your life, meaning you want to run and leave and go across state line just to get away from some asshole. Because when you leave one asshole and go to another state, there's another bunch of assholes in that state, too. But trust and believe, I've dealt with some assholes here, too. Um, but... Moving was like a big journey for me and I'm I will be the first to tell you that I'm like super glad that I did it because my kids love it here and I love it here. I'm just not gonna tell you that I like the heat so much because it gets damn hot. But I do really, really love it here and I'm so glad that I moved here. Like this is the best thing that I've ever done, I think, for my kids and it just shows them a whole new world and it opens up their eyes to like different cultures and different things and it just lets them know like you know what you can do better in life you just got to work hard at it and it's, you can achieve it um so yeah that's just my opinion and that's just how i felt about moving so on that note let ann know if you've ever moved across country what you feel about it or if you just moved in general what were the first steps that you've taken to move and I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. If you're interested in a wig made by me, you can always hit me up at goingwiththewindwigs.webly.com. That information will be posted for you guys below the link for that as well. As I also do carry pre-made wigs as well, which are custom hand sewn by your girl. And there are a couple up there. There's probably like three there now um, because they get sold out really quick. But yeah, they are there on the website now so take a look at it but yeah so on that note um stay diva and devolicious um thank you guys for staying tuned and i'll be back soon and yeah i love you guys